Hey guys, what's going on? David Lillian back again with yet another editing tutorial for you guys. You guys know who I am, you guys know what I do. All the links to my Instagram pages where you can see more of my work will be in the description below this video. Anyways, first off, I want to get through this quickly. So, first off, wallpaper of the day, Francesco Totti. I mean, what a player. What more can you say about him? One club man for Roma. Just a brilliant striker throughout his life. Always getting to goals. Still doing the business there uh, in Rome, in Italy's capital. Let me know if you guys are Roma fans or uh, know somebody who's a Roma fan, live in Italy, whatever. Just pop that down in the comments. Uh, I thought this was really good. I made this a while back, about a few months back, I think. Uh, worked on the fire explosions and the background stuff. But I think it was all right for a few months back. I hadn't really gotten into designing wallpapers yet, so it was all right. Um, so that's the wallpaper of the day. Anyways, I want to announce my winner from last week's giveaway, which is you get a PSD of your choice from my page. So... The winner is Nitro Sports Z, and the question was, what is the greatest goal you've ever seen at a stadium or um, live on TV? So for me, the answer was Gio van Bronckhorst in the uh, for the Netherlands in the 2010 World Cup against Uruguay. And he says, Nitro Sports Z says, I saw a bicycle kick from inside the box in the NASL, which is the North American Soccer League. That's the second tier of American soccer um, by Minnesota United. Uh, it was in the second division, so I was pretty surprised. I actually went up and looked up that goal. That was amazing. So, if you guys haven't seen it, definitely check that out. All uh, Go to my last video. If you go to my last video, you see all the comments are just these goals that people have seen at the stadium or on TV. And I, it was really cool because, you know, there were goals that you'd seen before. Like, um, for example, uh, Drogba over Neuer in the um, Champions League in 2012. Or something like um, Zlatan's bicycle kick versus England. But, you know, there's that. But then there's also the goals that you hadn't really seen of people from their native countries. And I thought that was pretty cool to look those up and get a chance to check those out. So I definitely advise you to check those out. But uh, Nitro Z Sports, or Nitro Sports Z, you get a free PSD. DM me on Instagram or uh, email me, do something, contact me, and I'll get you your PSD immediately. Anyways, the questions for this week is who will be winning Euro 2016. Personally, my pick is France. I want to know what you guys think and who do you think will be the top scorer. So, it's who is going to win Euros and who is going to be the top scorer. For me, my answer for top scorer has got to be the one, the only, Thomas Muller for Germany. He's going to break the record for World Cup goals. He's bound to break the record for... Um, you know, he's going to break the record for the World Cup goals. And, you know, been playing for Bayern Munich now for eight years. He's only, like, what, 26? Amazing player. I, I think he's going to spend the rest of his career at Bayern. Um, so I absolutely 100% believe that Thomas Müller will be the top scorer. But Germany will, or, sorry, France will take the victory. So let me know what you think in the comments below. You'll be getting your free PSD if I like your choice and you win. Explain why. You can pick Scotland for all I care. And then if you can give me enough reasons and just say, look, I like Scotland and I think this is why they can actually win and they got this player and that player that I've never heard of, then go for it. And I will have a look and pick yours. So without further ado, let's get on with this tutorial. By the way, I'm extremely happy today because we beat the Scousers yesterday. Come on, United. May have been dominated throughout the whole game, and any other day that we played like that, I would have complained and say, all right, we won, yay, three points, but that was terrible. I don't give one damn yesterday. We went to Anfield, and we took it out. Louis van Gaal may have a ton, a ton of other managerial issues, but beating Liverpool is not one of them. Anyways, let's get on with this tutorial, and always forget to do this. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of fire explosion things in the background. And it's very brush based. So you're going to need some brushes for this. Uh, I think they're called scorching flames, I want to say. I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can check that out. You're pretty much going to need it for this edit. It's kind of impossible to do without it. But to start off, we're going to get Eric Cantona. <sighs> what a player. What a player. Look at that beautiful, beautiful man. Anyways, we're going to start by skinning this picture. And we're going to go into Topaz Labs and go to Denoise. Now, you guys have seen me do this a ton of times before. If you don't know how to get Topaz, there's tons of tutorials on YouTube. You can go to their site and download the free trial. And then what you got to do is put in that license code. If you need the codes, DM me. I have the codes still. I don't know if they still work. They worked for me back in April. And then they basically just give it to you for free forever. So I don't know if they're going to work necessarily. But give it a shot. So this is Topaz Denoise. And you can see we just... Um, took some of the noise out of this picture. 
and it's very saturated on his shirt, so I may have to take some of that uh, color out of his shirt. And now we're going to go into Topaz Adjust. This is going to be a big change here. We're going to go Dynamic Pop and hit Apply. And then Dynamic Pop 2 and go to Finishing Touches, Transparency, and we'll just find what we like. So don't want it too crazy. Let's go 70. I like that. That looks pretty solid, pretty solid. You want to make sure it's denoised enough when you're about to go into our next step because if there's little dots everywhere. It's going to look pretty weird. So I think just to be sure, I'm going to go back to denoise and take out all the little dots that we have. So if you have any sort of threat of little pixels, stray pixels, then you should be fine. So we'll just do it a little bit. It's on light setting, not heavy or anything. Let's see. Give it a minute to load up. There we go. Back to filter. Back to topaz. And Topaz clean. So I already have the pre-setting for this, so it, it gets a nice look. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to sharpen it a little bit. I'm going to go through the steps in a second as to what it looks like. So the code for clean, you're going to go to curly smooth, as I usually do. Strength 4, threshold 0, radius 8, accent 2, radius 3.01, sharpness 0.53, texture 0, boost 1, and size 2.0. So there you have it. Uh, it, I may want to lower the radius a little bit on this, and I think I will. So now it's down to 2.35. I like that a little bit better. So we're going to hit OK. And there is our skinned picture. We're actually going to do one more thing, which I've started to do. It really brings out the clean a little bit more. And I'm going to go to Detail here. And you don't need this, but I, I like it. I think it brings out a little bit more contrast in the clean. We're just going to go to Overall Detail Light 1, pretty much the lightest you can do. And just hit OK. And it's not too much of a difference. You can see if I go back and forth, there's no detail. There's detail. So just a little bit more brings out sort of the folds and stuff just a tad more. So anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to mask this picture. So just go to Command-J and start using your quick selection tool. Just click that plus sign. I know I've done this over and over and over for you guys. Let me know what you guys want to see more of. Uh, this was very requested, this fire sort of tutorial. But my main problem now is that I don't really know which direction to go with this channel anymore because there's not infinite amount of things that I know about Photoshop and I don't want to be giving you guys false information as to how to do things. I've already known that in my tutorials I've showed you how to do stuff that is could take three clicks but I made it take a hundred and I apologize for that. But I want to know as to which direction I should keep this channel into. Don't know how long I'm going to be able to keep YouTube intact. It's it's a tough thing because I, I don't know how much more I can upload as far as content about Photoshop. So if I don't upload Photoshop, let please, please, please let me know what you guys want me to see. If you guys just think you're not good for anything else, just, just do Photoshop, and then if you can't do it, then don't do it, then fine. But if you feel that I have the personality and the character to go do maybe some other football-related stuff, soccer-related stuff, just anything, anything that you guys want to see on this channel after I'm really done with the tutorials. I know I'll try not to be done with the tutorials. I'll try to push on more, more stuff, learn more stuff so I can teach you then I will do that. But if I can't, let me, please let me know what I want, what you guys want to see because I want to continue doing YouTube. I like doing YouTube. I uh, especially like doing this, but I don't, can't keep it up forever. So anyways, there's Eric Canton on Mask. We're just going to go to Command X or you could go up here to Edit and it would cut would be an option. Um, basically, yeah. So you can just take off that back, uh, the visibility of the back layer and check it out. So that looks pretty good to me. Now, we're going to pop open a new file. And we're just going to go have the settings at 2, 2, 2, 2, and 2, 2, 2, 2. So we can post it on Instagram with that nice square look. We're going to fill the background with some black. <coughs> Sorry. And we're just going to drag in our Cantona. Make sure you're on that top layer selected. And just drag him in to this uh, black. Oh, I didn't drag him all the way. Just going to drag him up and into that image right here. Never break your drag. Just go to Command-T and hold down shift to size them up while it's still in proportion. And put them nicely on the bottom there, and there you go. So, now here we go. We're gonna wanna make it a layer above the black layer, just an empty layer by clicking that button down there. And we're gonna go to the brush tool. Now what we want is we wanna get two oranges somewhat alike. So, somewhat alike but somewhat different. So we're gonna go to the orange here, which is this general area and just select a dark orange down here. And we're gonna hit okay. That's gonna be one of our colors. Let me get this out of the way, this annoying me. And then you're gonna go up here and select a very bright orange. So we're gonna come up here, sort of like a peachy uh, apricotish color. That looks good to me right there. And now we're gonna come down here and go to 
uh, brush presets, uh, just sort of the messing with the brush tool. And what we're going to want to do is we are going to go to Color Dynamics, and we're going to turn the foreground and background jitter all the way up. So basically, what this is going to do is every click, it's going to be a different color within this color range. So we're going to go down to the brushes. Now, these brushes are amazing. They, th this is all you need for this edit, and it's, it's really going to look nice. It really looks realistic, and I advise you heavily, if you want to make this edit, you need these brushes. Otherwise, it's not going to be possible to achieve this look. So we're just going to come down here with the 2169 pixel brush. It, it, the pack runs from, I believe, here, this one, the 705 one all the way to this 2100 one. So that's what you're gonna want. 2169 right here, pretty big one. Size it up if you need to. And just start the clicking. So the color dynamics should be on for this one. If it's not, I think they may have turned off naturally. There they go. So we'll turn them on again, sorry about that. And you can see each click is gonna be a slightly different color within that range. That one was very dark. This one was very light. And if you don't like it, if it looks weird, then you can change it, but it's okay, you know, it's, it's, it's all good here, it's not, nothing going wrong so far. So there you go. That's just what I like to do with my base. Now, you want to fill that generally that whole thing up, now you're going to go to this 2344 four brush, and we're going to do the same thing. For some reason, Color Dynamics turns off every time for me, I don't really know how to change that. Um, I think if I deselect that, I think it might stay on forever, I don't really know. But we're still going to want that color in there, and we're just going to fill in all the spots. So, some black there. I want to get rid of that. This looks okay so far. You might be saying to yourself, this looks a little bit weird, uh, maybe not so natural. That's okay. Now we're going to go to this 955 brush, and I think the color dynamic should still be on. I don't think they are, actually. So, I think I may have ruined this. Yep. So, they turn off. I really don't know why. Do I have to lock it or something? I, I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you know how to do this. But basically, uh, so yeah, so the color dynamics are on for this one. So you're just going to want to go and click around. And it's looking good. It's looking good. Now we're going to go to this one. This one is the 1518 brush. And maybe you want to make this one a tad bit lighter. So maybe you want to, or it's a tad bit saturated more. So, almost a yellowish color. I don't know if the color dynamics are still on. Actually, I want them kind of off for this one. And they are on. So, we figured it out. You just got to hit that lock button, and then they will stay on. Uh, we can keep them on for this one. It's not a huge deal. And we can just find something that we like. So, something like that would look, I think, ideal for us right here, and maybe one down there. Now, we're going to come into this 1136 brush. And just come up there. Ooh, I like that. Really liking that. So you can see our base still bleeds through these top heavy layers, but it still looks really, really nice. And now maybe just finish it off with this 662 brush. Size it up a bit. And you definitely want these colors changing. So color dynamics is on. Don't want it too saturated though on this one. Just want basically a mix of colors here. That's how I describe it. Just like a nice nice blend here all over the place. So if you want it a little bit brighter around your player, then you can do that. Maybe you want a little bit darker around the player, then you can do that. So anyway, you're saying to yourself, it's good. It's all right. A little bit weird maybe. You can add, you know, maybe another layer and just just go for it straight, straight under the player. Um, a little bit less saturated, just messing around at this point, trying to figure out something good, something that works. Don't want to go up there again. Maybe, maybe a white, maybe a pure white. Who knows? Just, just keep messing around with what you're doing. Something like that. Maybe overlay it. I don't know. Yeah, that looks nice. I like that overlay setting. And then you can just click around on that overlay setting and try to find something like cool. So there you go. It's really just about your creativity and messing with the colors that you like. Now, just a few more, 1136 again, and we're going to add a new layer above that. Go back to our orangish color, so I'm going to want a big little puff there, and that looks nice. So I'm really, really liking that. I think it looks really realistic and nice. 
can always, again, just mess around and click around. Sometimes, you know, I might do this for 15, 20 minutes until I get it the way I like it. That is my final answer. So that looks really cool as it is, and I like it. But we're going to make it even cooler and look even more realistic. You might notice that Cantona looks a little bit weird on this flames, you know, maybe a little bit insecure. I don't really know how to describe it. You can put them under some flames if you like. Just whatever. But what we're going to do now is we're going to add a gradient map. And what this is going to do, so you're just going to want black and white and go to gradient map. And it's going to have it a nice black and white. You're going to set the blend mode to overlay. Now this makes the fire look really, really realistic and really, really saturated in color. And I really like that. I think that's awesome. So now, now that we have that, well, you can take it down a little bit if you need to. Now we're going to add a warming filter. So go to photo filter and just go to warming up here. And this is going to really bring out that fire in the color, that, that sort of red, red light that you get from it. And it says, you know, flaming right here. Don't really know how to say stuff. But anyways, that's going to bring out those colors. And if you want to, something that I like to do sometimes is um, maybe just add some Topaz filters. So Topaz Adjust is going to look really good on this. If you go to Dynamic Pop, it's really going to bring out the flames. Maybe tone it down a bit. You don't need it too much. And there you go. So nice, some nice topaz filters. Why not? Why not? And now what I like to do is duplicate that uh, layer of Cantona and just go to an eraser brush. And just go up here to a soft brush because you don't really need, uh, I just like to keep a duplicate layer just in case I mess up or I don't like something. And I'm just going to brush away the bottom part of his body. Maybe if you want, you can even brush away a side part and have him emerging from the flames. Totally up to you. Maybe that's what we're going to do today. Eh, don't love it. Change it back. Alrighty then. So, what else can we do to this? I don't know. A light? Something like that? Who knows? Anyways, we can delete this layer. Or, no, we'll keep it in there and just put it at the bottom. Um, let's see. What else can we do? Oh, let's see if we can add a light. Let's see if that works. So maybe, under Cantona, we're just going to be adding a little bit of a soft brush when it loads. Soft brush. And some light. Maybe just overlay that. So that looks pretty sick. If you don't like it that bright, you can go to soft light, whatever. Maybe duplicate it, get a little bit more glow behind it. You can add another sort of... Uh, line of light. Now these are called rays of light brushes. I think I linked them in one of my previous videos. So you can definitely check them out. Uh, ask around my subscribers. They'll know which video to find them most likely. If not, uh, I'm not exactly sure which one they were in. So I think we're, st we're still on color dynamics. That's why it was messing me up there. So we're going to take this off now for the rest of the video. Unlock it like we now know how to do. And I'm definitely feeling that one. That, that, lo that looks nice. That looks real nice. Um, yeah, it's all right. Maybe you can add another gradient map. And you can do it multiply. Turn that up. Or maybe you like it a little bit better like this screen. And maybe a little bit less multiply. Again, totally up to you. You're the artist here, guys. It's your decision. It's not my decision how you make your work. I mean... I don't know. What else can you do with this? Maybe add another photo filter. I'm liking that. Feeling that. Um, some debris, perhaps. Let's go with that. Just trying to throw some stuff in this video. Make it a little bit longer for you guys. Uh, this is what I usually do. I add some debris here. And just some explosion behind them, maybe. Cooler guys don't look at explosions. They blow things up and just walk away. Uh, there we go. And maybe some down here. That looks a little bit too uniform. We will not color dynamics, shape dynamics. And angle jitter. Turn that up all the way so it flips at a different angle each time we click. That's definitely looking pretty cool. Really feeling this one. If we invert it, we can see what it looked like with white debris. Maybe I like that a little bit better. Maybe you could put it on overlay and see how that looks. Maybe you like that. 
I'll, I'm going to call it a day with that one right there. I think uh, thinking that looks pretty cool. Something like that. Um, if you want the fire at the bottom, do the fire at the bottom then. Let's see. I think, think we are going to call this one a day. So we're just going to add a watermark down at the bottom here. WFA. The font that I use is a Vengeance Heroic Avenger. Uh, I forget what it's. What is it? Let's see. A Vengeance Heroic Avenger Regular. So feel free to use that. I don't have it copyrighted or anything. It's a free font you can download. Just throw that down in the corner. Make sure it's on lowercase. Uppercase looks weird. Um, there you have it, guys. So really hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if this video helped you in any way, or form, please remember to give it a like. If you're new, remember to subscribe. Remember the question today, who do you think is going to win Euro 2016? And who do you think is going to be the top scorer? My answer is France and Thomas Muller. So leave your thoughts in the comments below. Hope you have a great day. Follow me on Instagram. And I will see you guys next time.